Hey everybody, I'm Jeffrey Way. Welcome to the net.touchplus.com screencast of the week. Today we're going to continue on with CodeIgniter from scratch day 7. The number one requested tutorial for this day was pagination. So that's what we're going to learn and you're going to find how simple it can be with CodeIgniter. So to give you a quick example of what we're going to build, just really simple, we're going to be using the HTML table class along with the pagination class to create something like this. Uh, total gibberish from a database just duplicated a bunch of rows, but you can see, oh, whoop, you know what, I'm sorry, I've deleted my example, but uh, as you would imagine, this allows you to paginate through. So we're going to be building that today. Before we begin, if I can just take a quick moment, if you enjoy these video tutorials, please visit uh, .NET Magazine's thenetawards.com and vote for us as Vodcast of the Year and Blog of the Year. We would appreciate it so much. Next, uh, if you guys aren't aware, we had a massive relaunch, a redesign of the Envato marketplaces. So if you're interested in selling web templates or purchasing templates maybe for a client's project, be sure to check out themeforest.net. It's the best in the business. So let's take a look at the database we're going to be working with. If you've been following along in previous lessons, we have a just a base database called CI underscore series and I created a table called data and it just has an ID, a title, and a column and you can see it's just a hundred rows of just random data. That's all we're going to be working with. So let's close this out. I'm going to open up websites and I have a fresh install of the latest CodeIgniter and we're going to rename this to CI. So I'm going to load this up and just do some quick configuration. We're going to take the application as always and move that out. You don't have to, but I prefer to. Close that out, and we're going to grab it and bring it into TextMate. Okay, we need to do a quick uh, little bit of prep. We're going to do auto load, and I'm going to make sure that I auto load the database class because that's what we're going to be working with. You'll find you'll probably auto load that every time, and we're also going to be working with the URL helper set up our configuration options. Uh, we need to set up a base URL. So I'm going to go to map and open my start page. And if you remember, we set it up to CI. Okay, so that's going to be what our base URL is. Next, let's go to the database uh, for our connection. I'm using a uh, an open local server, so my username and password is root root. And that database, if you remember, is called CI series. And finally, let's go to um, Roots, and we're going to come down and we're going to set our default controller to one that we will create called Site. All right, that should be good for configuration. So now let's go up to Controllers. I'm going to right-click and create a new file called Site.php. Class Site extends the controller. And the first one we'll do is Function Index. And we need to do, uh, first let's auto load, auto load, let's load the pagination library. Okay, and we need to set up some configuration options. So the first one is going to be the base URL. Don't confuse this with the, uh, the site base URL that we set up. This is going to direct us to uh, the base URL for our pagination. So if you remember to get to that site, we need to go to site, the controller, and the method that we're calling, which is index. And we're going to place that right here. Okay, the next one we're going to do, whoops, i got to copy that one more time. And the next one is going to be um, total rows. How many rows are going to be paginated total? And to do this, we need to query the database. Now I'm going to show you that CodeIgniter can be as strict or as flexible as you want. If you don't want to deal with a model class, you don't have to. It's up to you. It's considered a best practice, but it's also many people, maybe if you're building kind of a smaller static site, it may not be necessary to create a model. So I'm just going to show you, for example, that if you want, you can connect your database directly from your controller, if it would be easier and if uh, be simpler for you. We're going to do this, db, we're going to use the active record class, and we're going to get the data class. And then to get the total number of rows returned from that, we're going to do num rows. Okay. Uh, see, the next one is going to be the uh, per page. How many do you want to display per page? And let's just hard code this in at maybe 10. 
Next one is going to be the number of links. And this is uh, when we show at the very bottom of our table, we're going to have the one, two, three, four, next, previous, those links. How many do you want to show? And let's just set this to maybe a high number, like 20. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now the next thing we need to do is actually initialize it. So we're going to do this, pagination, initialize. And we're going to do config. We're going to pass in these configuration items, and we're going to pass that to initialize. Okay. Next, we need to actually have something to work with. Uh, so first, we'll load the view, and we'll call this site view, and we're going to pass uh, a data array that we always create. So we'll do data, and we're going to pass, um, let's call this one records, and this is going to be where we query our database. And we will do uh, this db get, once again, data. But now we are going to actually pass in a couple extra parameters. We're going to pass a second and third parameter. And this is what really allows for the pagination feature. The second parameter is the limit. Uh, if we set a limit of maybe select all from data limit 20, it will only retrieve 20 rows from the database. Okay, So we need to tell it what the limit is. And the limit, as you might guess, should be the per page. We're only pulling 10 records uh, per page. So what I'm going to do here is just copy the per page and paste it in. Okay. Now the next one is going to be the offset. We need to offset this. So if we said uh, select all from data, the data table, limit 20, but offset by 10, that would skip the first 10 rows and then take the next 20. And that's what sets up the pagination. Now the, we're going to grab that actually from the URL, and this is where CodeIgniter is going to help us. So for now, I'll explain this a bit more, but just know we're going to use the URI helper, and we're going to do this URI segment, and we're going to get that third one. And that will be equal to a number that will... Uh, uh, correlate to uh, the the offset. Okay. So now if I come back and refresh the page, unable to load the requested file, site view, of course, we need to create that. New file, site view, and you know we're just gonna put a whole page in here just for convenience. Uh, let's see, the first thing let's do div container. Okay, sorry about that. And we'll do H1, and we're going to do super pagination with code igniter. Okay, and now we need to do a couple things. The first one that we need to do is echo this. Ugh, I can't type today. Pagination. If you guys ever wonder why, it's because I have a huge mic in front of my face and it's kind of hard to see. And we're going to create links. And this is what actually will create those uh, those little selector links. Come back. And you can see now we have all of these. So we've, we've set up pagination. Now if you look at the very top, look at that number. Let's, let me go back to one, for example. There's nothing there. Remember, this third segment uh, references the offset. So remember, we're limited in 10. And we'll do number 2. And now it's set to 10, so we're going to offset by 10. So we're going to skip the first 10 rows in the database and then take the next 10. Here we're going to skip the first 20 rows. Here we're going to skip the first 30 rows, and that's what creates it. So to show you how can we easily display this data if we're going to present tabular data, we're going to use the HTML table class. So to show you how to do that, we're going to load that library as well. And we're going to do uh, this load library table. Okay, so now the only other thing we have to do is actually generate some data. So we'll do up here once again, echo this, table, generate, and we need to pass it a table or something like that so that it can create a table from it. So we're going to pass in records. And just to clarify what is records, records, if you remember, is the query database. So remember, records, once it's passed to the view, it's turned into a variable, and it just references getting all the rows from the data. Okay, Come back, refresh the page, and now we have our rows just as a table. Look how convenient that table helper makes it for us. And now if we skip, you can see we already have that feature. What did that take us? Just a few minutes? It's, it's, it's really incredible. It, it works perfectly. So now, why don't we... Um, 
it, I'm going to style this a little bit. So if you don't care to, to view the CSS portion, you can feel free to skip ahead uh, just a little bit. The first thing we need to take note of, actually you do need to watch this though. The first thing you need to take note of is the fact that when we create our pagination links, uh, we don't really have a way to latch onto it. You can see it doesn't wrap it at anything like maybe a WordPress would do. It's just a link of anchor tags. But we can tell it that we want to wrap it uh, with something and we do that within the config again. So we'll do config and full tag open and this is going to be what will we what will we wrap it in and let's do a div with an ID of um, pagination and we also need to do the closing so full tag close and that's going to be just a closing div tag. So if I come back and refresh the page view my source, you can now see that it is wrapped within a div. It looks like I forgot the opening bracket. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get to some styling. This is where if you don't want to watch, you can skip ahead a few minutes if you like. I'm going to set the container and we're going to set the width to 600 pixels and margin auto to make sure that it's centered. We're also going to get the table and not table, just the table, and we're going to set a width also of 600 pixels or 100%, and we're going to make sure that we push down these links just a little bit, so push it down about 10 pixels, and you can see they drop down just a bit. The next one is TD. We're going to set a border right of one pixel solid, a, 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 which is kind of a grayish color to add a bit of a divider. Next, we're going to add 1M some padding all around. Next thing we're going to do is I don't want this border at the very end like that, so we can do TD. This is an advanced selector. It won't work in everything, but for this example, it'll work just fine. So border right equals none. Now let's do the table, the headers up here, and we can modify those if we want. I'll show you back from our controller. But here, let's do text align left, padding left of 1M. We're going to set a background to CAC9, C9, kind of a darker gray. And next, we're going to do um, border bottom, one pixel solid white. And that should be good. Let's also set a border right of one pixel solid. Um, trying to remember what color that should be. There we go. No, that's not the correct color either. I think it is A, 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 A. Yeah, and now that, that adds. Okay, so TH, we don't need a background here. Hmm. I think I can get rid of that. Nope, that's being applied to something else. We'll figure that out in just a minute. Now we're going to do pagination A, and this is going to style the links above. So we'll do background, kind of a grayish color. And we'll do padding, four pixels, seven pixels all around, just to kind of give it a square. And I'm going to make sure that there's no underline, so text decoration is none. Border all around it is one pixel solid. And then it's darker gray color again. Okay. And let's also set a color of kind of a blackish color. And what else? Let's see a font size of 13 pixels. Now you'll immediately see the currently selected item isn't an anchor tag, and the reason they do that is they don't want you to click on it. So instead they just wrap it within a strong tag, and that's how we can actually uh, latch onto that one specifically if we want it to look the same. And we'll do pagination strong. Okay. The only other thing I want to do here is pagination strong. We want to give the user some feedback to let them know that that is the page that they're they're looking at. So what we'll do is set font weight to normal because we don't need that, but we will apply a different background color, and we'll do that uh, that darker color again. And we should also kind of add a hover effect, so let's do a comma, and we'll do pagination, A, hover, and now when I hover over each one of these, you'll see it adds that for us. Okay, just zoomed back in a little bit for you. Okay, so let's just copy that, and we'll come back. And you know what? Just to keep this quick, I'm going to paste it in here. However, you um, this kind of goes against MVC, period. But you need to create a CSS folder and uh, reference it instead. And if you don't know how to do that, just leave a comment or watch one of the previous videos, and we'll help you. The only other thing what we should do, once again, we should put this in an external file, but it's fine, is um, we'll do... Um, 
let's do table striping. So we'll do TR and only get the odd ones and we'll do CSS background in that grayish color again. And now you can see we have nice table striping and we can choose any of these that we want. Okay? I'm going to zoom out just because I'm on such a low resolution. And you can see that's just working perfectly. So the only other one thing I want to show you is the pagination works perfectly. If you want a little bit more information, be sure to search the uh, Coding Nighter user guide. But if you want to uh, set up these headers so that they're maybe a little bit nicer looking, you can do that easily from the site controller. And all you would do here is, let's find a good place to put it, right here. This table set headers I'm not headers what is it I think it's set headings I'm sorry I don't I don't use this one too much and the first one is going to be the ID field and we'll say the title just for example the content or if you just wanted to make it capitalized or something like that that should be enough yeah and that works just fine Okay, so what I'm going to do here though, because it's not necessary, I'm going to comment that out. So that has been your tutorial for Codeigniter from scratch day 7. It shows you how easy it'll, Codeigniter makes it to paginate data. Uh, doing that, it took about 5 minutes. So for more, the best tips and tutorials on the web, be sure to visit net.touchplus.com or follow us at twitter.com slash nettouch. And as I said before, be sure to check out themeforce.net. The, um, it's a great way if you're an author to make a lot of extra money or if you're looking for for a quick template for maybe a client who doesn't have a huge budget, you can buy a template for $10 and you're all set. So thank you guys so much. I will see you next week. My name is Jeffrey Way. Bye-bye.